All right. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ben Sullins with Teslanomics here with my good friend John Tonmez, a simple programmer. And I'm excited today to talk to John because a lot of you out there have answered one of my surveys about whether or not you own a Tesla. And 70% of you have said that not yet to the answer, do you own one, meaning you do want one but you don't have one. And so I wanted to do a series here and, and uh, talk to people that I know who are successful at this, at making extra income, whether that's leveling up in your own career and making more money so you can afford one, or finding other additional ways to make income. So John is kind of an expert at that, and so I thought, like, John, if I was, uh, you know, maybe watch just introduce your channel, then I'll give you the scenario and you can kind of talk me through if you're coaching me. Okay, sure. So, uh, so I'm John Sonmez, like Ben said. Uh, I, I used to be a software developer for about 15 years or so. Now I, I have a channel called Simple Programmer, and it's basically, I, I usually say that I, I teach software developers how to be cool, <laughs> <laughs> which basically means that I, I do personal development, self-development, you know, to teach self, software developers how to improve all the other areas of their lives, so soft skills, everything. Really, really my, my goal is really to teach people how to, to maximize their potential. It doesn't just have to be software developers, but that's, that's sort of my, my thing. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. And so uh, I imagine a lot of folks that watch your channel like are probably in their mid twenties, maybe late twenties. Yeah, there's a pretty good mix. There's definitely a, a skew towards towards that. I would say because a lot of software mm -hmm. developers, a lot of people starting out, or are mm -hmm. going to be males in, yeah. in that age range. So. so, and a lot of the folks watching my stuff are 25 to 34, mm -hmm. 97 percent male. Right. Uh, which I don't know why. That's just what it is. Um, so, so let, let's play through this scenario here. So if I'm in that category, I've got a job maybe as a software developer or, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm an electrical engineer or I work at a coffee shop, whatever. Right. Like, what would you tell me in terms of how could I kind of end up, you know, being able to afford a Tesla, whether that's, or in what means would you recommend, you know, what would be the easiest, what would be the best, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I would actually back it up just a slight bit and, and ask the question. I know that, you know, but, but you do have to ask the question of, like, are you sure that this is a wise, like, you got to start from that, right? It's like, it's like, and, and if it is, if you've thought this out, right, and it's like, you know, no, seriously, I want a Tesla, I need to make yeah. the extra money, but I would start from there, is okay. that, like, you know, because what, what, what you don't want to do is set yourself back with, you know, burdening yourself well, with a lot of... Oh, okay, so, so let's play on the angle about being cool. Okay. And Teslas are definitely cool. They are cool, yeah. <laughs> so, I want to be cool, okay. and I've decided the way I want to be cool is to get a Tesla. Okay. So how am I going to do that if I'm, I don't know, making an average salary, 50, 60,000 or something like that? Okay. So there's a few different leverage points, right? So so the first thing that I would say is, is, is that you want to be, if you're going to be able to afford something like this that is essentially above your means, right? right. At, at this point, you have to expand your means and you want that to be coming from passive income. You don't want that to be coming from money that you work for uh, as, as much as possible, right? Because that's, you know, that, that, that's, that's a formula mm -hmm. for setting yourself backwards is, is to be to be constantly working for the money that you're right. you're spending, right? So, so what I would say is that the, the first thing you want to do is figure out how can you live on less, right? So you want to reduce your 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 uh, what you need mm -hmm. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's always like the first step. If someone says, "Hey, I want to become in financially independent, I want to retire young, whatever," uh, the first thing you need to do, or I want to quit my job and and, and start my own business. How can we reduce, right? So think about what you're using first of all. Right, that's, okay. that's the easiest place to start. Is like, do you need that big of a house? Do you need, yeah. right? You know, what what are your priorities? So I've got the yeah, I've I've got the condo or apartment I'm living in. I've got the the video game system. I've got subscriptions to everything under the sun. I've right. got or maybe I'm you know I love NFL and I spend four hundred dollars a year on NFL Sunday. I have all these things I already spend money on, and you're saying. Kind of take just maybe take account of that, right? Like like what like list out what it is you actually spend money on, right? And figure out what like what's essential or you know what could what would be the minimum? Is that the goal to figure out like like how little of money I actually need to survive? I would say sort of I would apply the eighty twenty law to the so Pareto's law. So like what is the what is the twenty percent that you could cut out that's going to save you eighty percent of, sure. of the money, right? So so the idea here would really be to think about. How can you how can you maximize the utility that you have? And and I would say another thing that that matters here too is like, you know, it depends on where you're at, right? So when if you're making like thirty or forty thousand dollars a year, then every penny that you save 
has a higher utility value. Right. If you're making like $150,000 a year, it's trying to like think, oh, I'm not going to go get a coffee at Starbucks every right. day so I can save myself two or three bucks. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I've had that argument with my wife many times, yeah. You, you got, it really <laughs> depends on where you are. So that's where that, that sliding scale. But either way, right, I mean, if you're at the point where you want to buy a Tesla, you can't afford to buy something, then you got to say, okay, well, what is it, you know, mm -hmm. where, where, can I, where can I have that maximum effectiveness, right? So for a lot of people, the, the biggest expense is probably going to be rent or mortgage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've got to ask yourself, well, hey, you know, well, how much, let, let's, let's, let's go for this. Like, how much do they need? How, does some, how much does someone need approximately? for a, a Tesla payment yeah. that we're looking at? So, well, it, it, it depends on, there, there's a few different ways to take it. You can buy or lease, okay. and you can buy used, which will be cheaper overall, but then you're going to have to probably have a higher loan payment. But I would say um, for around 800 bucks a month, uh -huh. you could afford the car payment. Okay. Then you're going to add in the insurance, right. um, which depending on your, so many factors with insurance, uh, you could be paying anywhere from 100 bucks a month for that to maybe 250 bucks a month. Right. And then fuel costs, you know, there's no gas, but you still have to pay for the electricity. Right. Um, you can't really get it all free from superchargers and other places. I mean, if you can, that'd be amazing, but just forget that. So you're probably going to spend maybe 50 to 60 bucks a month on electricity. Right. Um, so, so you're really not going to not going to get away with anything less than probably about 1100 bucks a month for the car. Okay. That's, you know? that's, that's not bad. That's definitely doable. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people probably that are, that are watching this could probably find $1,100 mm -hmm. just by doing that. Just like, let, let's not even worry about making more money. Just yeah. like taking and looking at, you know, your rent, your mortgage payment. Can you save a couple hundred bucks here? Mm -hmm. Can you lower your cell phone? Do you really need cable TV? I mean, right. are you wasting your time? You should yeah. just be watching YouTube videos. You know, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So, so that... Or or at least maybe that'll get you half of the way, right? right. So that's right, that's right, where right. I would start. And the reason why I start there is because that's the simplest place to start, right? It's, it's harder to, to make more money. It, it, it's easier to, to use what you already right. got coming it, it, in. It's kind of like in business. You know, we always, when I, I lived and worked in corporate America for many years, there's basically two levers you can pull at the top level. Right. We can either spend less or make more. Right. Right. And so that's what you're talking about. So first we look at spending less. Exactly. And then that'll give us more room to afford that car, right? Exactly. So then the next place I would go after that, because that's your easiest, is is what you're already making, right? Before mm -hmm. we even talk about making side income or passive income, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, your existing job, are you leveraging that as much as possible? Because there's some opportunity there. If you can get a 10% pay increase, if you can make more money, if you can make ten right. or $20,000 more a year, there's your payment right there, right? If, right. if you're going to do that. Again, I have to say that I'm, <laughs> I have a 13 year old uh, Toyota Corolla. So, uh, so it makes right. me a little bit uncomfortable to tell people how to like afford like a thousand dollar car payment, but you asked it. So I'm, I'm telling that's you. That's what we're doing. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Uh, so, um, so yeah, so I would say like, can you go and can you renegotiate your salary? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and if you think about it strategically, like there's probably, you can either maybe do a job hop and find another job. A lot of times yeah. the way to get the salary up is really to just go, I mean, if you've been at your job for a couple of years, go and put the resume out, go and, and look see for another job and, and see. I, I can say in my career, I, I did, this is where I landed in consulting right. because I basically couldn't stand being at the same place getting 3% raises every year. Right. When and I, every couple of years, I just find a different company and be 15% more. So yeah, that's absolutely, I, from my own experience, I can say that that's true. Exactly. That, that absolutely works. And that's, you know, and, and just have the balls to go in and ask for a raise. I mean, honestly, like, I mean, have your, have be smart about it, be strategic, right? I always say one of the strategies I always used was I kept a week, I sent a weekly report every mm -hmm. week to my manager. So I, every day I sort of made like three or four bullet points of what I did that day. Mm -hmm. And I put this in this big file. Like I sent all these weekly reports. And then when it came to like review time or yeah. raise time, yeah. I had like 50 accomplishments. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was prepared. I was like, I've been sending you a weekly report every week. So when I came in to ask for a raise, it was, here, it here's, here's, yeah. And if they ever wanted to give you negative feedback, you're like, well, where, you know, yeah. <laughs> I've got I'm, evidence right here. What, what have you got to, sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's probably your next, your next. Try to, thing. try to level up in your own job. Just right. Not even necessarily get a, get a, a new title, just more money. Right. And try to negotiate a bigger, better salary. Exactly. And know what you want, know what you want. I actually give a, a good book recommendation that you can link to, which is called, uh, 
Never Split the Difference. Probably the best book on negotiating I've ever I've ever read. Uh-huh. It was written by a, a professional FBI hostage negotiator. Oh, okay. And that book, I've read that book several times because it's such good advice on negotiating. So if you're going to renegotiate your raise and yeah, yeah. Do something, go, read that book first. Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference. All right, I'll, I'll make sure to include that. That'll be perfect. Uh, so yeah, so then that that's so that's your second. So then the third thing that you can do is obviously make more money. I think uh-huh. when most people think there, that's where they start. But if you probably so that sounds gonna, like that's the thing we want to do, right? right? Like that's in our culture. It's like in our blood. Like hey, more, 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 right? But that's but that's actually the hardest thing, right? So mm-hmm. like I mean, you, you're you're doing a lot of work, right? Obviously to create these, this 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 business right. in, in these YouTube videos, and you're not making a huge amount of money from no. that. I, I know how much YouTube guys <laughs> make, you know. Yeah. And uh, but but. It's a long-term investment. In, right. in five years, you could be doing good. You could be, you could be the next uh, what, what's his name, uh, Casey Neistat, or something <laughs> like that, right? So, but so that so what what I would say then is that you can start something on the side, mm-hmm. keep your regular job, right? Figure out something on the side that you can start, but don't think that it's gonna, it's it's not just gonna, you're not gonna suddenly start a side business and make five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a month. It's just not right. gonna happen that way right. unless you're just doing like. Uh, unless you're doing things that are not going to scale and have a long-term benefit, which is right. not really business. I mean, if you go and you do extra work, I mean, and you, that's an option. You could like yeah. freelance consulting on the side or something right. like that, right? Where it's still, it's not that passive state you want to be in, right? You're still exactly. trading your time for money. And so, yeah, I mean, maybe you could afford it, but you essentially won't have time to enjoy it, right? Exactly. And, yeah. and the thing that you're doing with that is you're putting yourself on a treadmill and you're pushing up on the speed, <laughs> right? And so, like, when the shit hits the fan, if it does, it's all going to come tumbling down the hill. So that's why I would advise against that because if you lose your job or you get tired of it or you burn out or you get sick, all of a sudden you still got the payments that yeah. you're making, right? right? But now you're in trouble because you were you were sort of, you're burning the midnight oil to make uh, ends meet or to afford your Tesla. So I'd say if you're going to do a side business, you're going to do an entrepreneur thing, yeah. do something sustainable and be willing to invest the time, right? Work your current job and start something on the side. Do you want to start a YouTube channel? I mean, it's going to take some time, right? I mean, yeah. You get a thousand bucks a month of, of YouTube income. You might have to record four or five hundred videos, like just plan like that. Two thousand, like or, somebody. <laughs> yeah, or two thousand. I don't know how many you're up to now, but uh, I know. I think like sixteen hundred. Yeah, maybe, so, you're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Okay, great. So, in terms of side businesses, what would you recommend? Like, what do you think is probably the easiest, or maybe not the easiest, but the most sustainable long term? Right. Like, right. Like, we we know that we're not going to get there in in a month or two months. I mean. What what would you say? Like, like what is my timeline to get to a thousand bucks or mm. eleven hundred? And then, what business do you think is going to be the best one in terms of of uh, making something sustainable that'll keep me at that level, so right. it doesn't come tumbling down? And and I saw you know uh, it was a notorious big right? More money, more problems. So, exactly. You know, we don't want to get into that. So what would you say? Like what what are some good options for people to try to explore? So the big thing I would say is that in, you want to build. So, so a lot of people come up with really great ideas, and they, they're like, in fact, they get emails every day. You would be surprised from people that have their million dollar idea that they they don't want to quite tell me what it is, <laughs> but they they want to make some money off it. They feel like they've got this idea of burning a hole in their pocket, and I almost always email them back if I even do and, and say, I'm sorry, but your million idea million dollar idea is worthless. It's right. all about execution. Like everyone, like I can come up with a with a million dollar idea every single morning, yeah. right? Just I'll practice coming up with 10 ideas every day, I promise. So there's no shortage of ideas. Don't think that your idea is golden. Instead, focus on, and don't focus on a product, focus on an audience. Mm -hmm. So think about who you're going to serve. Like, I mean, you're you're a perfect example, Ben, because you have focused on people that are interested in Tesla, but not just Tesla, the data, really data geeks that are Tesla. So this is a very small niche, right? So the people that watch your channel, right, the people that are watching this video, they are super geeked out about this. So this is, they, this lights them up. They love this shit, right? So... If you do that and you build an audience, okay, then you're going to have lots of things to sell them, right? I mean, there are lots of options, right? Obviously, you're making some money off of ads on YouTube, but in the future, right. you can sell a book, you can sell like a product, you could sell a course, right? Something. Water bottles. Yeah, uh, water bottles, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Stickers, yeah. You know, all kinds of stuff. Right. But. but because you've got the audience. Whereas when, when the person comes out, you know, and it happens all the time with software developers because they can build stuff. Right. So they build a product and then they're like, well, if they build it, 
they'll come. Yeah, but yeah. that's not true. You could build the greatest thing in the world, and and no one's going to come. You, you, having the audience, but if you have an audience, okay, yeah. you 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 will always be able to sell something, and it's sustainable because people are buying you or they're buying. Right. The, right. What, you know, they're the, with you. Exactly. Yeah. They're exactly. not. They didn't just come in and leave, and they'll never see you again. And yeah. they're they're sticking with you. And you know, I, I think uh, what's the old adage about software developers, right? Like every. Every full-time employed software developer is a failed entrepreneur, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Because we've all had those ideas, right? I don't know if you were, I imagine you were in software development like before Facebook was around. Right. And we all had that same idea. Oh, yeah. Like, like no, it wasn't novel in any way to make Facebook. Right. Right? In fact, there were three other ones already out there that were incredibly popular, but they just executed. And yep. it wasn't even necessarily the software was better or anything. No. It was a strategy and how they grew yep. that turned into what it is today. I mean... Um, and, and I even look at look uh, the electric car industry and think about Tesla because um, making an electric car isn't new. Right. And but what but what Tesla has done is the execution of it. It's, it's, exactly. They, they've captured people's uh, fascination with sexy cars. Exactly. Right. They made it cool. Yeah. yeah they, like they didn't come out with the Chevy Bolt that looks like a mom van. Right. They, they, they came out with a Roadster, which was like a sexy little fun car to drive up the coast. Yeah. And they sold it to celebrities. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and it's like, th that wasn't even part of, like, back then, the thinking still, I'm sure, was like, look, we want to change how people drive. Right. But we can't start with the most practical application of it. Right. Exactly. Right? So the idea isn't like, oh, we have a fantastic electric car. The idea is we have to sell people that you can, you'll love driving this vehicle. Right. Then once people are sold and bought into that, they, they can, you know, make things like the Model 3. Right. They can, they can really expand out and have... You know, people like me that make channels that just talk about them, right? Exactly. So I love that idea. So building an audience. Yeah. Um, and there's different ways to do that. Right. Right. So I'm doing it through YouTube. Uh, what other ways do you think are worthwhile? Because um, there are a million ways, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I just want to make a comment, too, on yeah. that. Like, the Facebook and the Tesla are actually real good examples. In fact, Facebook, if you think about it, they served a very, very specific niche, which was college. Like, in fact, they started with one college, right? Yep. And they served that specific, and then they expanded out. And then you're talking about Tesla rolling out the same model. So the same thing is like you start with a very small niche, and then you can you can. So, so roll whether out. um whether I'm making uh, content like a YouTube channel or a blog or whatever, right? Or I'm making a physical product like a car, right? I start with my my audience. Right. Exactly. I focus in and find who they are, and once I capture their attention and, and garner and earn their love, right. uh, then I kind of grow. Exactly. Right? And I think the there's a, yeah, it's it's um, it, it's it, there's like this this I forget the this diagram, but it shows like there's early adopters. Yeah, they're like, crossing the chasm. That yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of books on. I think one of them is called like Spark or or Why mm. Things. Uh, why things catch I care yeah, like, yeah. why things are contagious we'll, we'll find links and put them there, in there. there's a few different books I right. think Malcolm Gladwell had one of them that was uh, tipping point tipping point oh right yeah, yeah. yeah. tipping point and, and, and it, it's that it's like you want to hit the early adopters there. like you want to build that that fire right to answer your question, although other mediums, right? I mean, YouTube is obviously awesome, but blogs, podcasts, uh, trying to think what else there. Anything where Instagram, people are going to go. Yeah. Twitter, Snapchat. But, but, like, which ones do you think are actually viable to make money on? Because I feel like, yeah. I don't know, I've tried a bunch of them, um, and I've only found success on YouTube in terms of something that's sustainable, that financially makes right. sense. And it's because it's built into the platform. Right? right? You literally click a button or by default, you just start making money. Um, you know, and it's just very little. It's very invasive or very uh, non-invasive, right? A right. five-second ad that you can skip, whatever. Like, do you think blogs and Twitter or I don't know what other, what other mediums, do you think they're really sustainable nowadays or are they kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me you would need a massive following on like Instagram before you could really make a penny. You know? Yeah, you know, I've seen people make money on every single platform uh, on building an audience. It's really like I think you got to pick one platform and focus on that first, and be extremely prolific on that platform. Yeah. And that's that's the key. And and if you're niche down enough, if you're creating good content and you're you're consistent and committed for long enough and persistent, right? It's going to yeah. take a long time. Then you can build it up. Now, obviously, there's some platforms that are better. Mm -hmm. the, the ones, that, I mean, the reason why I like YouTube so much mm -hmm. is because you're seeing me. Right, mm -hmm. you're hearing me. Right, like I have your attention. Right, uh, and and it, it's it's a more per and, and it's almost like you're a TV star, right? Like you can actually build a higher level. That was of the whole idea of the platform, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? right? Yeah. Uh, whereas you know. 
podcasting, there you're in someone's ear for a while. Definitely, there's podcasters that do well. I mean, look at like podcasts like Tim Ferriss's podcast. Sure, and, yeah. And there's a ton of podcasts where they make but, money. But he didn't start podcasting, right? I mean, no. he put out some books and was pretty well known by the time he got there. But he had it, yeah. So he had an audience. He already had his audience yeah. before he broke into that. So that's kind of, I mean, I guess that's the same lesson, right? Right. It's like, like even, even. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you've done a lot more things than I have in terms of expanding out. But for me, it's like, I have YouTube. Right. I have a website, which is basically just the YouTube videos. Right? Right. It's just like, it's just there to connect people. But, so that same idea of like, you find, okay, so you find my audience, my niche. Right. And I find my platform. Exactly. Just the one. Right. And then eventually I can grow and expand beyond that. Exactly. And that's how it becomes sustainable, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because once you have that audience, it, it'll carry over, right? Yeah. I mean, Shaq, uh, he, <laughs> he was, he built an audience from playing basketball, mm -hmm. and then he became a rapper. Like, right now, I don't think he did super well as a rapper, but he so, but he, he got a record label a million bucks, right? A million albums, yeah. Right. I mean, you see it all the time where he we're sold more than me and you combined. Right. Right. The, the people come out, you know, famous people come out with clothing lines and perfume lines and, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's definitely that, and, and like you said, even Tim Ferriss, right? His books and then his podcast is automatically popular, right? And so then like, has a TV show, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you can do the same thing. I mean, you can use books as well too, right? You can publish books. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a little bit hard. It's probably like it's probably better to have like a big YouTube following or blog following and then publish a book, right? Because that'll you know, and then that will expand your reach further. But you got to think long term. And basically, it comes down to this: is if you're willing to like think five years, okay? If, if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, right? And, and think about mm -hmm. this ahead of time before you, before you embark on this path. But if you're willing to create content, and I'm talking like write a couple of blog posts a week or make a couple of YouTube videos a week or make podcasts or whatever it is, and you're willing to do that for about five years, mm -hmm. okay? That's you a long time, yeah. Yeah, and, and be consistent, then you'll, you'll, you'll probably reach a level of success where, where you could probably make a full-time income. Not full -time a super income. huge income necessarily. I mean, right, you right. might, but, but that's about, I mean, you're gonna, you have to get traction. Right. And, and it takes it, I haven't seen most people get traction in under a year. Usually the first year you're doing stuff, you're like, no one's listening, no <laughs> one cares, right? I, when I started doing YouTube videos, I think for the first year, I think I didn't even have 2,000 subscribers, wow. right? Yeah. And that now I'm adding 6,800 subscribers a month, right? So it's like you got to get the ball rolling. You got to get enough right. traction. Right. So yeah, I mean, and you know, to reinforce that, my YouTube channel was basically me talking about data stuff. Yeah. And, and but and basically nobody cared. Right. At all. <laughs> right. Until one day, I made a video where I looked at how much it cost. Uh, to pay for my Tesla. Right. And all of a sudden, within a week, I had 250,000 views on that one video. Yep, yep. And it just was a firestorm. I mean, now it's almost at a million views. Only, right. And that was only three or four months ago. You know, and that's why I went from 800 subscribers and then within a month and a half to 6,000. Yeah. Right? And now I just crossed 19,000. Right. And yep. so, it, it, yeah, I mean, but i had been making YouTube videos for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all about a bunch of random crap, you know, and it finally hit that point where all of a sudden, my voice, I guess, like right. the thing that people cared about that I talked about, you know, hit. And, and all of a sudden we have this community, you know, that people that just tune in every every single week to, to hear me babble about data and Tesla, right? Which is kind of, I guess, a unique thing. Like no one else really does that. So. Exactly. And you got to find, I mean, you throw stuff out there you, yeah. and you see what sticks. You swing so, that a lot of times and then eventually hit. So, so how long? How long are we talking until I can afford a Tesla? Back to the main. <laughs> so, I, I mean, honestly, I think if you're willing to, like, if you start at cutting expenses, mm -hmm. right? I mean, again, I have to say it depends on how bad you want this, right? It, right. It's always the question, the answer to all of these questions, because people say, hey, John, how do I retire early? How do I, like, you know, just, like, quit my job and stuff? It, it, I can tell you, it just depends on how bad you want this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've wanted something so bad that I've slept on the mattress on the floor, you know, in one bedroom <laughs> apartment before, so how bad do you want it? Yeah. Uh, but if you want it bad enough, if you're willing to cut expenses, start there. If you're willing to do the work of, of trying to get that bump on your on your job or how can you make more money for your job or can you do overtime, what what can you yeah. do to, to do that? And then and then and then starting the business, making money on the side, you know, 
like, like I said, I think that's that's a, a longer term yeah. kind of thing. But I think if you're willing to do those three things, I would say that within a year, if you're serious about this, if this is your goal. If you if you write it on your, uh, you know, you post it on your your computer your monitor or, or your mirror, right? And you're like every morning, you're like I'm going towards this goal. I want to have a Tesla. I'm going to make a thousand bucks, right. eleven $1, hundred bucks right. extra a month. Go to the website, customize it, print out the photo, right? exactly, put it right. up there. Yep. And every day you're aiming towards that. I would say that you could do it in a year. I mean, in for year. some people, they could do it right away just by doing the first two things but yeah yeah depending on how big their expenses are and stuff yeah and, and you know uh the a model s with the seats folded down can fit a full-size mattress <laughs> there you go <laughs> the, the there is a guy yeah. uh, okay there's a website turo yeah. uh where you can rent cars and right. it's like it's like airbnb for cars yeah um and so a lot of high-end cars are on there and a lot of teslas and there's a, a guy that's pretty well known in the in the Tesla community that did this, and yeah. you could you could call it the Tesla Hotel, nice. and then you could stay in his Tesla. And part of the deal is uh, it takes almost very little energy to run the heat and air conditioner. Yeah. Like you could run, I forget what they told me, like seven to ten days. Yeah. Just running full blast. Yeah. Whatever you know, and so you can sleep in it overnight, even if it's cold out. You can just run the heat all night long. Right. You know that kind of a thing. So I guess yeah. How bad do you want it, right? Cause exactly. Yeah. If you completely knocked out your mortgage. Uh, I mean, it depends where you live, but like here in San Diego, you can barely find a place under 1100 bucks a month yeah. to live. So I guess, yeah. Well, and, and even, you know, I tell people all the time, too, like in reference to, usually it's about retiring. <laughs> usually it's not about like affording and luxury. But, you know, I understand that people want people their want this, How bad do you want it, yeah. right? So, um, so I tell people all the time, like, okay, even if you live in somewhere like San Francisco, where it's really expensive, or, I mean, if you want it really bad, right? Like, if I want it really bad, if I was like, I don't want to work for someone else, I want to, like, have passive like I want to start yeah, my yeah. business or whatever I would go and I would rent a room not an apartment not a one bedroom not a studio yeah. a room right split with roommates there are you know yeah. college kids do this all the time yeah. right I mean a lot of places you could you could rent a room for 200 bucks 250 bucks a month there I mean go. that's yeah. that's that's cheap, right? You could save a lot of money that way. There's a lot of things you can do if you never eat out. Yeah, if you yeah. All, if you, like, rice and beans and, and eggs, those are pretty freaking cheap, right? Ramen, man, yeah. Like, if I you're willing, it. yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, heck, you can, if you're willing to eat once a day and get the $5 <laughs> lunch deals, you can live pretty cheap. I mean, you know, there's a lot of options. I think, I think a lot of people that are successful in this way have those stories. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like everyone I know that I've talked to that's been that successful, some sort of successful creator has that story of like, yeah, I slept on the floor. Yeah. Right. Or I ate ramen for anything. Even Elon Musk. He's yeah. a great story about this where he, the guy had more money than he knew within a lifetime, yeah. but he, he dumped it all into SpaceX and Tesla, yeah. had to like borrow money to pay rent with very little, super high risk, very little certainty that either of these companies would, would work out. Yeah. Right, and now, I mean, now, oh, obviously, yeah. it's all working out for him. I mean, he even did a thing, it was funny, um, he, he he tried, I think this was college days, he was living in Canada, um, to see if he could live on $1 a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he did. Yeah. He yeah. was able to do it. Oh, yeah. You know, he said spaghetti and pasta sauce go a long way they for do. food and stuff like that. So, that, that's some good lesson. Yeah. So, one year, yeah. look at, try to reduce what you spend now, or look what you spend, see how much you can make there. Try to get a raise in your current job, if that's even doable. Right. Uh, and if you have the balls to ask for it and all that, or maybe find a new job. And then, lastly, try to, like, make more yeah. income. And passive, passively is the way to go. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, I know that, but I, I think a lot of people out there maybe don't really, haven't, haven't caught, caught on to that yet. So. And I'll give you one more bonus one. Okay. So, I, I started investing in real estate about when I was 19, I've got about, I do, I've got maybe about 11 or $12,000 a month passive income that comes in totally passive from real estate. Wow. So, you know, there, there's a couple of Tesla, there's a land yeah, yeah. payment there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but here's, here's the thing. So let's say that, let's say that you have, you're a little bit better on the on the on the pay scale. You're, you're doing okay. You got some money in the bank, but you can't quite afford a Tesla. I mean, we're, right. we're talking like a hundred something thousand dollars. Yeah, depending. Yeah, give or take, depending on your options. You can get one as low as like seventy five, I would say. Okay. Uh, unless you buy used. If you buy used, you can go in for fifty. Okay. So at that point, it's not really. I mean, it's an expensive car, but it's not like. Yeah. It's not a hundred thousand dollar car, right? But you may be able if you got like twenty, maybe thirty thousand dollars cash, or yeah. forty thousand, you might be able to, depending on where you're at, buy a property. Let's say a duplex property, uh -huh. right? Maybe even live in one side, right? That'll, that'll save you some, some money and have enough cash flow rent coming in after the down payment. 
that might be a thousand dollars, eleven hundred bucks a month, right? So you could invest because the nice thing is the bank will loan you, the, you know, and yeah, then yeah, and yeah. then the money you're making from that, and then it's a Pay totally passive lot. income. Yeah. Then it's the nice thing about doing something like that, and see, I'm I'm more in line with doing something like that because yeah. it's more sustainable because the money that's kicking off from that real estate investment property is paying the payment on the yeah on the it's car truly passive exactly, yeah. and that's so if you're going to invest the money. So for example, if I were going to buy a, a Tesla cash, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. I might have the money in my bank account to do that, but what I would probably do is take that money, buy a property, sure. have the money that's kicking off as cash flow from the property pay the payment on yeah. Tesla and I'm getting it for free. Yeah, yeah, right? and you still have the property. Exactly. You didn't even, I was explaining this to uh, to my wife the other day because we're looking to put, um, we're looking to build an apartment, uh, right. like a studio that we can rent. And, and we're like, oh, we're spending all this money, but but in your scenario and in this scenario, it's the same idea. Like, you're not actually spending that money; you're just transferring it. Exactly. Instead of sitting in an in, uh, in, in investment fund or just your bank account or whatever, you're putting it into the property. Exactly. It's, it's still there. Yeah. That money is still there. You could sell the property right. and, and hopefully get that and, and more back. But um, so yeah, so I love that idea because you essentially didn't really lose any money. You didn't spend anything. And you know, one thing I get a lot is people saying like, oh, well, you're saving X amount of dollars on your Tesla, you know, when will that, like, it pay itself off? And, and, and I go back and say it's a car. It's not paying itself <laughs> off. It's cars a luxury are, invest, like, ca yeah. Cars are losing investments yeah. any which way you look yeah. at it. Well, well, you know? you don't lie to yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah. like so if you're going to buy a Tesla, just admit to yourself that you want to buy a luxury. Like, it, right. it is not a necessity. It's not going to save you money. Definitely like, not. Let's, I mean, there's smart ways to do it. Right. But, like, people that deceive themselves always end up in trouble you know right. like, just be honest just be like hey I want to do this and I want it this bad I'm willing to do and, it and, and that's a fair enough reason yeah because you want something is totally valid to right. go do it exactly. now the irresponsible thing is when you go that route and you don't have a plan exactly and you don't have a way to actually sustain it right you know that's where I think a lot of people get into trouble yeah yeah there's there's a lot of ways if you're willing to think it out and, and, and think ahead so. all right so one year we know how to do it yeah. um, where can people find you and learn more about you? Because I know you teach people a lot of this kind of stuff or sure. people watching our software developers and they want to be cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, where can they find you and how can I so do that? I, I probably, for, for people that are watching this, YouTube on just Simple Programmer, my yep. channel on YouTube. And uh, or simpleprogrammer.com for for the blog, but yeah. That's... And of course, we'll put links and everything to the books we talked about, uh, to John's channel, um, and if we can find uh, that other book that talked about the chasm thing, we'll put that in there as well. Cool. Well, thanks, John. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. And uh, I will see you guys back here for the next show where we're going to be talking. I guess I'm going to want to interview a lot of folks that have done this, that have this experience, because I'm getting there. I'm starting, but I'm not the expert. So I want to bring experts like you on and share with everyone. So thanks for joining us again, and uh, we'll see you here next time. Take care.